Treasure makes another appearance on the Mini Mega Drive with Gunstar Heroes. An amazingly fun run and gun game right up there with the best of the best. Think Contra but with bright colours and no one hit kills. You have four different types of weapons which can be picked from the start of the game, then can be swapped during levels with pickups and even combined to create new weapons. While the weapons are fun, it's the control that you have over the character and the direction of shot that makes the game so much better. Again, like Contra, you can run and jump around in all directions as well as shoot anywhere you damn well please. Add to all of that a two-player mode and you have an instant classic. Will play again. Like, whoa, dude, totally radical. Kid Chameleon is the coolest game out there, bro. <clears throat> yeah, enough of that. Kid Chameleon is yet another 2D action platformer where you were sucked into a video game and have to defeat the big evil boss to escape or whatever. Nothing groundbreaking there. What sets this one apart from most other games are the different masks you can obtain to transform into new characters, each with their own unique abilities. Kinda like Dynamite Heady, only your entire body changes, not just your head. You can become a knight that allows you to take more damage and break blocks you couldn't before, a samurai who uses a sword and is considerably faster than the other characters, and lastly, just from the time in my game, a berserker with a large horned helmet used to smash through walls. I believe there are six more in the game as well, and multiple ones will show up in a single level in order to progress through parts that you otherwise couldn't with just one mask. I had a lot of fun with this until I got stuck and couldn't figure out what to do, spending a few minutes wandering around and changing masks hoping to figure it out. I didn't. However, given the fun that I had up to that point, I would definitely like to try again. Will play again. 1993's Landstalker is an isometric action RPG that lets you take control of Nigel, a treasure hunter, on the hunt for the treasure of King Noel. All of your standard rpg is here, with a town to wander around in and talk to people, places to rest, buy items, and lots of areas to explore and battle monsters. There is even some platforming thrown in for good measure, which is mostly fine, but occasionally making jumps with an isometric view can be a little difficult. Battling can also be finicky, as I find it to be with just about every action RPG from the 8 and 16 bit era, as you often need to be in THE right position to land hits, otherwise you miss completely or end up taking damage yourself. Honestly, this has always been the biggest reason I've had for not really being that interested in action RPGs and instead sticking to turn based. That being said, I did have a good time here and have considered playing through the game fully, but I think I might need to look up some info on roughly how long the game takes to finish first. If it's a fairly short experience of around 4 to 5 hours, I'll go for it. Any longer and I probably won't. Might play again. Oh look, Treasure is back again! Two Treasure games and two isometric action RPGs in a single video! Almost like I planned this whole thing. Except I didn't. In terms of gameplay, this is very similar to Landstalker, but has a very different look visually, and what seems to be a bigger story as well, though I am only basing that on my short time with both games. Here you take control of the knight, Sir David, and after returning from... holiday or something, you are informed that people have been going missing, and it's up to you to find out what's been going on. Walk around, talk to villagers, rest up, buy items, and then of course go fighting monsters in caves and whatnot. There seems to be more emphasis on platforming here as well, which again suffers from the isometric view, but overall I did okay. You also get to use magic this time, something I didn't see in Landstalker, which adds a little more to the basic action RPG combat. Good chance I'll give this one another go too, but again, it needs to be a shorter experience than your usual turn-based JRPG for me to really want to finish it up. Might play again. 